Hello, hello, hello. Happy Saturday, y'all. It's your girl, Sharita, the behavior and literacy strategist coming at you from the Morgan Unlimited Growth Institute, where you can find solutions for both your child's behavior and literacy challenges. What's up? It's Saturday. Happy Saturday. I just finished working. It's kind of early today. I didn't have a late night appointment today. So I'm going to um, go upstairs. This is a hair wash day, y'all. So up underneath here, I washed my hair and I did deep conditioning, threw some bantu knots on, plastic bag on top, wrapped my head up, and went to work. And Jazzy was just down, down here. She just did the same thing. This is hair washing day. Maya's hair is washed already. I washed it because she had picture day on Thursday. So I washed it earlier in the week already. So, um, yeah, I got finished. I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to take another shower and rinse my hair, moisturize and do the little routine and stuff like that. So I wanted to jump in here and, and talk to you before I went about my business on Saturday. Okay. <laughs> so this is a good topic for y'all. Um, it's about kids uh, studying. Why they should study. Three reasons why kids should study every single day. And I know that sounds excessive, especially in this day and age. Every day they should study every day. Yeah, they should, okay? If your child is struggling with reading, if your child is struggling with writing, spelling, math, they should study every day. But let me tell you what I mean by study, okay? First of all, you have to have a learning uh, environment set up in your house so that it, it basically runs the, the, itself, okay? And that's what I help moms do. You have to have it run so that they already know what to do to study. And then instead of study, think practice, okay? Instead of study, think practice. Anything worth getting better at and mastering deserves practice on a daily basis, how long does it have to be? It doesn't have to be that long. They just have to work at it a little bit every single day. See, the learning process is um, very interesting, y'all. Um, when we learn, and I'll, I'll take myself for example. I'm, I'm always doing new things or trying new things or trying to figure out new things, right? And uh, when I first start doing it, it don't work out, okay? <laughs> it don't work out when I first start, y'all. But the second time I do it, I was starting to... Seem a little familiar here. I'm starting to get a little bit. I'm starting to understand. And then I might be washing dishes, you know what I mean, or cooking. I might be doing something, and then, or I might be out in the garden, and then all of a sudden it's like, ah, that's what I need to do next, right? That wouldn't happen if I hadn't been working on it already. See, the learning doesn't stop when we first sit down and do something. We first go, uh, start something, go at something. The learning doesn't stop. Our brain continues to grow in that direction. It continues to work things out. And when we practice something every day, when we do it every day, that's what happens. We're allowing the learning process, the learning process to actually go through a growth process, okay? So the first time, it doesn't work out too good. Second time, it's a little more familiar. Third time, hmm, I'm starting to get the hang of it. So maybe I'll try this. Fourth time, you know what I mean? And, and then you keep going on. And what you're doing is you're on your way to mastery. And with our kids, this is the same process. I have kids that I work with. Well, one um, just got off today. I just finished with, and she's in the first grade. And, uh, uh, she, you know, she's now writing a, um, a paragraph of five sentences. But when I first started working with her, I had to work on how to write one sentence, okay? But the more we work on it, the more we practice it, it's pretty easy now. All I have to do is say, all right, you, this is the time. I want you to do it. I want you to write me a, a paragraph on this topic. Or sometimes I let them pick their own topic. What you want to write about today, right? What do, why do I do that? Why is it that every time I sit down to work with one of my students, they have to write? Because every time they write, they get better. They get better at writing. They get better at the, the structure of a sentence. They get better at grammar. They get better at uh, making, remembering to put a capital letter at the beginning and a period at the end. They get better at spelling. They get better. If they don't do it every single time they see me, uh, and it, let's say I went a whole month without help having them write a paragraph, then when, they, when I have them do it again, it's like they're starting over. They're rusty. They got to remember what to do. 
They're not that good. It's like we're starting from scratch. This is what's happening when your children are um, struggling to read or struggling to, let's take reading. They, you want them to learn how to read a book. And they start off with you and they work on it, but then they put the book down. And then they don't get back to it a week or two later. And you're like, well, read, try this book again. It's like, oh my gosh, I haven't grown since the first time. It, it was very difficult for me the first, you know, the first time I did it. Um, I didn't feel successful. I didn't feel confident. I wasn't able to do it. And now when I try to pick the book up again and do it again, it's all those same feelings. So if you if you have your child uh, practice reading on Monday and it's very difficult but you have like you have some strategies to help your child figure out how to conquer those words y'all they have to conquer those words they have to be able to read each word in a sentence and the sentence separately and then the whole sentence together and then go on to the next sentence if you if your child learns how to do that and they do it on Monday. On Tuesday, they know more on Tuesday than they did on Monday. On Wednesday, they know more on Wednesday than they did on Tuesday. On Thursday, and so on and so forth, okay? This is why it's important to practice every day. Practicing is, uh, it don't have to be an hour. It don't have to be an hour. It don't have to be two hours. It's just they hit it every day, okay? So I got three reasons why it's important for kids to study every day okay number one it makes it a normal part of their routine so whereas at first it's like it's so hard to get them to uh study or practice something practice word spelling practice spelling practice timetables you know what i mean it's so hard to get them to practice it um because you're just starting it if it's something that becomes a normal part of their routine they're already doing it before you tell them to because they know at this time this is what i'm supposed to be doing and this is what i did this is how where i left off yesterday this is where i am now right so it becomes a normal part and we want studying and practice we want that to become a normal part of our children's lives okay our children are amazing they just rusty in some places, you know what I mean? If they're struggling with uh, reading or math or whatever it is, spelling, whatever it is, uh, they're still amazing. They're still smart. They're just rusty. They just have some blocks that 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 need to be, you know, some 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 clogs in the pipes that need to be unclogged. You know what I mean? So when we when they practice every day, this makes it a normal part of their routine. And this is what I'm seeing with my students. I don't get them all every day. Um, but every time I sit with my students and then, you know, yesterday we met and then today we're meeting again and the next day they already know what to do. They already telling me what to do. You know, all right, Miss Sharita, I'm ready to say my um, rules because they have to uh, recite the rules, success rules. Um, the Morgan Unlimited Growth Institute success rules. I take that very seriously. I'm ready to, to say my rules, Miss Sharita. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to write. I already got my date down, Miss Sharita. You know what I mean? I already wrote my name, name and my date down, Miss Sharita. I like that. I like it. So that means it's the system, the structure is set up. They know what they have to do. And they're already doing it even before I say something. That's what I call functioning independently. That's what I love. And that's what will happen if you, studying and practice becomes a normal part of your child's routine. This is just what we do. If it's something that we're struggling with, you know, or we, we haven't mastered, oh, that's okay, because we're going to study it, and we're going to practice it until we got it. We got this, okay? <laughs> number two. So, number one is um, the reason why it's important for your child to study every day is it makes it a normal part of their routine. Number two is they learn how to work independently. Think about it. If they know at this time, this is what they're supposed to be doing, this is what they're working on, and you work with them to create that kind of structure and routine, they're used to now sitting down. It may take some time, and you may need some strategies for them to sit down and focus and, and get to work without calling you every second and getting up and trying to get distracted. I'm, I'm just taking the behavior part and putting it to the side for a second because, of course, uh, if your child needs to be equipped behaviorally, uh, what I mean by behaviorally, if they act out or act distracted or they have all these things to get in the way of their learning, you need a special plan for that. Um, 
I call that an action plan, all right? And then um, if they are reading well below grade level and they're struggling, of course, they need some strategies and, and, and figure out how to fill up all those holes in the literacy foundation. So, of course, that's happening. So, let's assume all that's happening, all right? All right. Um, think about it. If they, every day do the same thing, work on the same thing, and they start to take initiative, and you don't have to say anything to them. They already got their stuff ready. They're already doing it. They lo they're watching the clock themselves to make sure that they start on time, make sure they finish on time. They're doing that thing, their thing. Guess where else they're going to start doing that? In the classroom. And I tell y'all that everything we do here has implications for the classroom, y'all, because we are improving our children's behavior, literacy, and also math now from home. So that when they go to the classroom, they're more equipped to show up like a champ, y'all. Show up like a champ, be successful, and function independently. So you're creating new habits. If their habit is usually when it's time to do their work, they start asking a bunch of questions and dropping your pencil like the kind of last consultation I did. Dropping your pencil. Oh, I dropped my pencil. Oh, can I ask my mom for help? And I cannot. All this stuff. If that's their habit now, they've been doing the same thing for a long time. It's now their, their habit. Their learning habits, right? We have to flip the script and change it and replace it with something better, okay? So this is the new habit. And if it's happening at home and they practice all the time at home and they do good at home, it'll start to show up in the classroom as well. So number one, it makes it a normal part of the routine. Number two, they learn how to work independently. And number three, they need less. Oh, this is my favorite one, y'all. That's why I sang a little bit. Number three. They need less help. They need less help. Picture this. It's homework time. Your child sits down and gets their own materials and they get ready and they get one and they can read everything. They can answer all the questions. And they are checking their own work to make sure it's right. And then they like, Ma, I finished. <laughs> hey! <laughs> or in school, same thing. Right? The teacher gave, gives the assignment. Your child is like, okay, all right. They just get to work. They finish their work. They check your answers. They raise their hand and let the teacher know they're finished. Okay? This is what we want for our children. We don't want our children to need somebody to sit right next to them at home or in a classroom to make sure that they focus, make sure that they do their work, make sure that they can read things for them. Reading a question because they can't read it. You know what I mean? Or that means they're not functioning independently in the classroom. That means they're not functioning on grade level. If they need all that help, that means that they're in the class that's too that's too far ahead for them. And they cannot function independently. If it's academically or behaviorally, that means that they're so used to using behaviors to get out of doing their work that people have to sit right next to them to make sure they stay in their seat, make sure they're focused, make sure excuse me, they're doing their work. Mm -mm. We don't want that for our babies. We want our babies showing up like champions, like leaders. And for that, they need to be equipped uh, uh, as far as reading on grade level, right? But they also have to have that structure and have what I call a self-party, a self-awareness, self-control, self-discipline, self-accountability, and self-motivation, honey. We want them to have that in the classroom okay so the studying at home helps with that it's not just uh every day you have to study this you have to practice this but they're also learning structure they're also learning to have a self party they also learn to to work independently they also learn to to work and get better at something and practice and find their own mistakes and correct their own mistakes which is one of the things that i teach my students Correct your own mistakes, okay? So the more we teach them to do these things on their own, the less we have to do it and the less the adults have, uh, other adults have to do it. Now, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing because there's growth in the challenge, y'all. So while children are being challenged and they are doing things on their own, it's not that easy, but they're figuring out, they grow. Every time your child is at a struggle point, Every time your child is having difficulty with something and you start to work on it, that is an opportunity for growth. And when our children keep growing in different areas, next thing you know, honey, they don't even need us to, to be on top of them about certain things. They got it. All right. So those are the three reasons 
why um I kiss you be studying every day. Okay? Now, Maya is about to start working on her letters. Because she got a master writing her capital letters and her lowercase letters. Okay? Now, I know that she's in preschool. And I know that uh, she's going to learn it. But this is something that we practice in the summer that she's a little shaky on. So, now we're going to work on it. When I say we, I mean she. I'm about to set up a system to where she knows where the notebook is. She knows where her pencil is. And I say, all right, it's time to practice writing your letters. She just grab it and she just, she know where to sit. She know how to sit. And then she just start writing them. And then she's finished saying, mommy, I'm done. And every time I see her do it. I can see how she's doing. I can see the progress. I can see if there's a letter that she keep trying to, to write, that she keep getting wrong or writing backwards. I can see that that's a letter that I need to separately work with her on. Okay? And then when I send her back into her little study zone, see how she's now able to write them, write that letter. Okay? So... When your child is studying, let them study and they're making mistakes while they're studying. Let them do it while they're doing it during their study time, okay? So you can see the progress that they're making on their own. And then you can teach them or coach them on the side for the things that you notice, all right? All right, child, it's been fun. It's been awesome. I don't know why. I have so much energy today on Saturday. I'm, like, so excited. But like I said, I'm going to go upstairs to wash my hair or rinse, rinse my hair do my little hair routine, spend some time with my family, work with Maya on her letters. Y'all remember the number wall I did, right? When she kept um, mixing up 15, 14, 15, 16. Remember that little uh, letter staircase I made, right? So she she did really good with that. So um, we're going to work on these letters, all right? So thank you so much for joining. Um, I have another one that I'm going to be doing soon about dads with discipline. Are dads better at discipline, okay? We're going to talk about that. I want to know y'all thoughts, okay? Moms and dads, holla at your girl. Let me know your thoughts. We're going to have a real good conversation about this, okay? All right? For more information on my tutoring and coaching program, go to growthinstitute.mykajabi.com. That's G-R-O-W-T-H, because that's what we focus on here, y'all. Institute.mykajabi.com. Believe in yourself. Believe in your child, honey, and always remember that growth is unlimited. Peace.